baseball eyes had descended upon the West Coast Bay Area for the commencement of the 1989 World Series. It was a Southern Californian's dream. The San Francisco Giants, who hadn't been to the Fall Classic since 1962 and hadn't won one since their days in New York, were finally back. Their opponents were the Oakland A's, who were the victims of quite the championship upset just a year prior and hadn't raised a trophy since their early 70s three-peat. The names on each line of card were different now. Cepeda, Pierce, and Hiller became Mitchell, Geraldson, and Williams. Rudy, Holtzman, and Bando turned into Conseco, Moore, and Steinbach. The host stadiums were only 22 miles apart, with a pleasant view of Alcatraz and Treasure Islands just north of the Bay Bridge, the most convenient way to go. Traffic during rush hour, well, that was another issue. How lucky if one could acquire tickets from multiple games. However, events which occurred over the span of just a few days changed so many lives, both there and here. Game 1 of the 1989 World Series took place on a Saturday evening. Game 2 was the next night. And I know I watched both the games, but I honestly don't remember anything about either of them. Except maybe Ricky Henderson had a stolen base in one. About three hours prior to first pitch, I received a phone call that there was an accident. And four of my college classmates were coming home late or early that morning and going back to the dorms. Every one of them, including the driver, fell asleep in the car they were in and crashed. And one of them, who was a year ahead of me in college, uh, died in the accident. And I had spoken to him the day prior, some 22 hours prior. and. I was in shock. There was no drugs or alcohol found once they did the autopsy, which we, we expected. But being 18 years of age and your first semester in college, that new step in life where you're going to grow up and be an adult, it was difficult to understand. It was tough to understand how something like that could happen because I hadn't lost anyone in my life yet. The baseball was a nice break from my thoughts and emotions. Looking up the scores now, I see Dave Stewart pitched a complete game shutout to claim victory for the A's in Game 1. Mike Moore delivered another strong performance for Oakland the next night, giving up just one run in seven innings. And yes, there was a stolen base for Ricky in that one. The A's outscored the Giants 10-1 in their two wins. This was the output Oakland fans had expected from the team a year ago, and many felt a coronation was just around the corner. After a scheduled travel day, it was off to San Francisco for the next contest. Back on the East Coast, classes went off on Monday without a hitch, but we were informed that a psychologist was coming in the next day to talk with every one of us, no matter what grade you were in. Um, to discuss issues you had on campus, uh, anything you wanted to talk about with the accident in mind. It was a good chance to just, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one and talk about, you know, fear of living in a new state, fear of living away from home, um, fitting in with, with new classmates, new people, um, what our future was going to be. Uh, feeling left out, in our studies, anything you want to talk about. So being um, the organized person that I am, I scheduled it for the early evening so I can get my work done on Tuesday afternoon after classes, go home, have dinner, come back, have my one-on-one -on -one meeting. I think it was scheduled for like around 7.30, so I figured by the time I was finished, get back in the car, get the lead out, and Jimmy Page and his buddies were gonna help me get home, and just in time for first pitch, and it was gonna be perfect, because I would've been able to express what I was feeling, uh, what, my, what I was questioning, and uh, at least have that peace of mind to get me through the, that week. And that's what happened. I 
got everything I wanted to get out out. I got some good advice. I felt refreshed. Um, I planned to go to the funeral and a little rock and roll on the way home. And I'm going to pop in the back door and we're going to start game three. And just like I wasn't prepared for the phone call on Saturday evening, I wasn't prepared to hear that there was no TV signal and there was an earthquake. It was a calm yet hot day for most any city standards in mid-October, but especially in San Francisco. Missing were those blustery winds and candlestick that would make an all-star outfielder spin in his tracks locating a simple fly ball. Most of the 62,000 that would fill the stadium were already in the ballpark. For 15 seconds, the world shook, and many weren't aware of why. Others knew instantly what was happening. Candy Maldonado with the hesitation, allowing Jose Canseco to score, and he fails to get Dave Parker at second base, so the Oakland A's take... take I'll tell you what, we're having an earth. Pieces of concrete from the stadium's upper deck had cracked and fallen onto shaken spectators who were looking for a sturdy place to brace against and then a way out. Known as the Loma Prieta earthquake, the event registered a 6.9 on the Richter scale, the second largest in U.S. history at that time. After all had settled, a natural shift in the Earth's plates caused 67 deaths and over 3,000 injuries. But it could have been so much more if not for the World Series. It was 5 p.m. local time. People were either at the park or had left work early to watch the game elsewhere. Part of the Bay Bridge had fallen. I can never forget the image of that one car teetering over the broken pathway in the viaduct. Another overpass in Oakland had collapsed. The marina was engulfed in flames from gas lines that had burst. What started out as a beautiful afternoon turned horrific in a matter of minutes. Rush hour traffic had commenced, and soon the town would go dark. The nearby Goodyear blimp switched from covering baseball to help organize rescue efforts. Power at the stadium continued thanks to backup generators. Al Michaels became on-the-scene reporter and basically relayed information from the network's production truck. Commissioner Faye Vincent announced a 10-day break in the series to give time for cleanup and restoration efforts. The games were no longer forefront in anyone's mind. Cleanup efforts took months at a cost of $5 billion, due in part to reinforcing masonry buildings that were built on poor land and the retrofitting of all bridges. The series resumed with Game 3 on October 27. Dave Stewart, with much armrest, pitched seven full innings, leading 9-3. The teams traded four run innings afterwards, but the A's prevailed 13-7. It was Stewart's fourth victory in the 89 postseason. Carney Lansford, Jose Canseco, and Dave Henderson racked up three hits apiece. In Game 4, Oakland scored three runs in the second and fifth innings, and took a commanding 8-2 lead into the seventh. The Giants countered with four runs in their half of the seventh, but it wasn't enough as Dennis Eckersley, the A's fifth pitcher in that contest, worked the ninth for the save and the franchise's first championship since 1974. The 1989 series place in history is known more for the devastation of a natural force that couldn't be tracked ahead of time, more so than the dominant performance of a team that was in the middle of a run which garnered three straight American League pennants. Surprisingly, the A's have appeared in 10 postseason appearances since 1990, where they were the victims of quite an upsetting World Series sweep against Cincinnati, and haven't won a pennant since. The Giants went to the 2002 World Series as a wildcard berth, one of four postseason appearances until 2010, when they went on a mini-dynasty capturing three World Series in five seasons, their first while playing in San Francisco. Woo! <laughs> As for me, I wound up graduating college, got a career in video production, and actually started my own business last year. 
I'll never forget the fall semester of 1989, pausing to remember those that were lost, both those I knew and those I didn't, but grateful always to everyone in my life.